So the former president's defense will begin their arguments now in just under three hours with one team member saying they may only need three hours to make their arguments. They're looking at getting this in, clocking under four total. And here are the three buckets they think we think that they're going to focus on, right? Number one, claims this entire process is unconstitutional. Two, that there is a lack of due process. Three, that what the former president said wasn't all that different from a free speech perspective than what we often hear from other politicians. You heard Democrats try to rebut, rebut, if you will, each of those things point by point. Joining us now, Paul Rosenzweig, former right water prosecutor, currently senior fellow for R Street Institute. Paul, good morning. Thanks for being on. Good morning. Thanks for having me. What's the card that the defense team has to play this morning? They don't have to play any one card, but they have to play a card that will enable a Republican senator to have the fig leaf of having listened to an argument and decided this on the merits, as opposed to having decided it on the purely political ground that I'm going to vote for Donald Trump no matter what. So it doesn't matter whether it's the First Amendment card or the unconstitutional card or the due process card. They just have to play it in a way that lets uh, Rob Portman say or or uh, Chuck Grassley say, no, I listened to that and I really have decided that uh, this process is wrong and I'm going to vote to quit on that basis. The video and audio recordings that we saw over the last two days obviously stirred up emotions, but they also stirred up serious questions around the timeline of what happened on January 6th and what the president was doing. Will his defense team have to respond to that? Well, they're going to have to try. Uh, I, I found the evidence from from the Democratic managers uh, pretty compelling. And I think that the ability to rebut that timeline is going to be difficult. What they need to do, what most defense lawyers will do in this position, is create enough confusion, uh, poke holes where they might exist. No, no presentation is perfect. No uh, set of a uh, timeline is, is ideal. So what they're going to have to do is try and find those little holes and open them up a bit and just create a little doubt in the minds of some people that perhaps the timeline was incomplete. It's a hard job because the Democratic managers did a really excellent job. Uh, of creating a, a, a solid timeline. But that's what they're going to have to try and do. Paul, I wonder what you think of what Robert Ray told us a couple days ago, that the defense doesn't even really need to show up for this, that the prosecution, prosecution has not proven their case. Well, I don't think it's that the prosecution hasn't proven their case. I think it's that the jurors have already made up their mind. I would put it differently. Um, I would say that the main goal of the defense right now is to do as much as they can to bore people to death. The, de right. the, the House managers have raised the temperature a lot, have created a lot of, of good momentum and emotion surrounding the horrors of the day. What I would do if I were in the defense's shoes is just you know, be boring and talk about legal principles, talk about due process, talk about everything except the horrors of what happened that day, and thus try and drain the emotion out of the room. Uh, they don't have to do much more because it seems like the Republican Senate has decided that they're going to acquit no matter what. And and so, you know, when you're when you're ahead on points, just shut up and sit down. Right. To be boring, should they take the four hours they said they're going to take? Should they take longer? Can you be boring and be short with this? Uh, you know, I. I think that that's actually a wise decision on their part. You know, four hours is about the right length of boring. If I, if it were me, you know, you can't be boring for 15 minutes. Everybody listens for 15 minutes um, and you can be over boring after 16 hours of boring. You would probably anger the Republicans for being boring for so long. So four hours sounds about right. If it were three or five, I wouldn't say, but I would take today. I would make uh, legal arguments about the constitutionality of the proceedings, even though you'd lost on that. I would argue about the rapidity of the House proceedings, even though that's not really a thing. And I would argue that the president was just exercising his right to to complain about what he saw as an unfair process, even though that, too, is not a terribly effective argument. I would make all those arguments. Each of them is an hour, an hour and a quarter, some throat clearing at the start and end. And, and bam, you've got four and a half hours. You quit as sundown happens and and you go home. Paul, when you look at things happening outside of the Capitol building, just a few blocks from where we are, I wonder if some of those things make it harder potentially for the defense team to do their job. I'm thinking specifically of comments out this morning from former Trump official, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, who in a new interview with Tim Alberta 
uh, a friend of the show over at Politico, described Donald Trump this way, that we should not have followed him, essentially, that he has fallen so far here that we need to acknowledge he let us down, she said. Uh, she is still a voice in the conservative party, obviously. She is somebody who is widely speculated to be planning a 2024 run. Does a comment like that, so critical of the former president, despite her remarks a couple of weeks ago to give him a break, does that make it harder potentially for the defense team to get their message to those Senate Republicans they need to? I, I think it does. I, I think that hmm. all of what the defense is trying to do is in the uh, uh, situation of what the party is going to do with Donald Trump. Uh, you know, tr the events of January 6th gave the party an ideal opportunity to step away from Trump. Right. In the very first minutes afterwards, even Lindsey Graham, a, a longtime Trump supporter, said, I'm done with Trump. But then he went to the air and he right. got yelled at. Uh, and so, uh, you know, Nikki Haley is trying to gently uh, lead the party away from Trump. The base in the party doesn't want to go there. And that's the conundrum that the Republican senators are facing. Uh, if they had leadership, they would probably follow Nikki. And if this were a secret ballot and they could do what they wanted, my guess is there'd be enough votes to convict uh, Donald Trump. But it's not a secret ballot. They've got to face the base. And that makes their lives very hard. Paul Rosenzweig, thank you so much for your perspective and analysis. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.